K May Reacts. I'm Kaylee. This is Malaysia. How? And this is our volume one soundtrack reactions. Ooh. Yes, I am very excited for this one. Uh, as you all know, Ruby Music is a godsend that all must enjoy. And now that she has some context for the songs, it'll probably work a little better on her. Although Jeff did want to, you know, make them where they could be enjoyed on the radio if, you know, someone heard it, but they do tie into the characters, so. Okay. Um, we'll be starting with Red Like Roses, the Ruby Red trailer. That's what I thought, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the thing is about this is it's mostly in instrumental, so it will be, we can talk a lot during that instrumental part if you want to, but. Cool beans. Yeah. Um, and I'm doing lyric videos, but we're not going to have video of this since it is a music reaction. There's not really anything to keep track of. And by now, I'd assume most of you know the lyrics to these songs, so let's go. All right. Three, two, one, you. This is probably my favorite one from the trailer. It's so pretty. Mm hmm Oh, I didn't even know why it was in there. Mm hmm How did I not catch this before? You were blown away by the aesthetic. And then she shot away a little. <laughs> I'm still blown away. I did not. I did not know that was in there. And I think it's because I was just paying attention to what's going on. It's like I said uh, when we were talking about uh, this before. Is that when we first did the trailer reactions? I was like, I like this song. It's really good. The Spanish guitar is great, but it's mostly instrumental. So I'm just like, it's good. It's a good song. In the beginning is amazing. Mm -hmm. I love how haunting mm -hmm. Casey sounds. It's really great. Uh, fan art. Uh, no spoilers on it, right? I don't think so. I didn't watch all the way through. I will. I will jump. <laughs> she panics over spoilers. She has spoilers all around her house. I do. There's a. I have a, a poster that's got things from volume five and four, and I'm like, oh no, no. Um, it's actually a calendar, but you know. Uh, I don't know what this big spoiler she's trying to keep from me, but almost all of them have it in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just. It's. It's. They know. They'll know if they have the calendar. I do mm. like that. That's kind of cute. Ruby fan art there. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I love the Spanish guitar in there. Oh, I, I like this part more. Better. better. Mm -hmm. More better. Better. Sips. Sips. Coke Zero. Judgmentally. This isn't Coke Zero. This is Vanilla Coke Zero. This is Diet Dr Pepper, Cherry Vanilla, and Rose. Oh, cherry. by the way, sponsored by Sonic. Not, Not really. really. <laughs> so I just really love how fast the Not even Mr. Martindale was that, that, that passionate. I just love how fast that part is. So good. <laughs> I wish I could do that. And this is Weiss's trailer, correct? Yeah. Uh, first, I do just want to mention, like, I do love that it goes through, like, each character that we're going to be introduced to. I just, I like that. Right. Uh, there is a line, the first line is, uh, Red Like Roses fills my dreams and brings you to the place you rest. And it's, like, drawn back to when uh, she, she was standing in front of the little, little memorial or uh, epithet thing at the beginning of her trailer. Oh, Ruby? Yeah. So it's like, who is it? Do we find out? It actually does say on there. It says Summer Rose. Um, that's kindly a scatter. Hmm. Yeah. So we can make an assumption. Yeah, like a, a sister. No. 
of mother? Yeah. It's supposed to be her mom. And there's no point in keeping that a secret, honestly, because it's, it's right there, so. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's head on to Mirror Mirror. <laughs> Snow White, how you doing? Mirror Mirror on the wall. Oh, who's the fairest of them? And I love that even I fell to the, uh, I think it's called the Mandela Effect, where uh, something gets widespread as, and it's actually misinformation. It's not Mirror Mirror on the wall, it's Magic Mirror on the wall. Is it really? Yes, that's the actual saying. I actually watched Snow White not too long ago, and I was like, oh! Everybody's getting it wrong. Mandela Effect at work. Anyway. Um, yeah, this is Mirror Mirror. Let's do it. I like the lyrics are on here. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought that was part of the song. No. It's but lonely and strong. Mm hmm That's why I just caught it. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to find some really good Larry <laughs> videos. Everybody makes mistakes. Yeah. I usually prefer to watch Flynn and Ruby because he gets lyrics directly from Jeff. Um, that almost makes her look sound even more sadder than s sound sadder than Blake. I mean, because, I mean, you heard, like, she just, it's almost like she hates herself. She wants to get away from herself, even, because she is says in that song. It's very, it's a very sad song, but also her opening trailer quote even points it out. She's like, everyone's entitled to their own sorrows. No one's is greater than the others. But I feel like looking at the lyrics really helps you understand more. Mm -hmm. like, for me, like, even when I'm watching a TV show, I like to watch closed captions so I know for sure, like, to get things. And yet you hate anime subtitle reading <laughs> because i know okay but the, it's one thing if you can understand what they're saying but yes. that just confirms it but if you can't understand them and you actually have to read you it's have to like, read it all yeah i understand completely that's why i prefer and i know people are gonna be like oh my god but i prefer dub over sub um so yeah anyway what is that uh english dub it's you know originally it's in japanese so they dub over it to put it in english with mm. english voice actors yes I would, that would be fine with me, but I, I, I'd rather just, I don't like to have to, like, read to see what's going on in the conversation. That's why I don't, that's why, like, I've only watched Passion of the Christ once in my life, because my dad made me, for one, 
but also because I realized it had everything was subtitled, and I was like, oh, heck no, I'm not watching this again. Plus, it's just a really sad, gory Sorry. movie. Ugh, Lord. Um, <laughs> no pun intended, Lord. Lord! <laughs> Lord! <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it's basically, it does really put in perspective some of White's behavior, because she asked at one point, it does, does, uh, can a heart turn to stone, and clearly she's had, like she mentions in the volume one finale, she's had a hard childhood, even though she is this rich, prissy little heiress, Mm -hmm. and so it kind of puts in perspective some of that behavior. I feel like watching, like, each of these, you kind of learn something about them, and that Mm -hmm. you didn't really, maybe didn't catch. Yeah. So, I don't know, like, I I thought that Weiss was really hateful, this the first volume, but this kind of makes me feel bad for saying it, because I, I don't know what she's went through yet. And, I mean, the writing didn't help her much in volume one. It's very, like, it's in your face how prissy she is, so it's, like, easy to be like, oh, Lord, please stop. But, yeah. It's, but then when you watch this, you kind of feel a little bit bad. It, like, it just a puts guilty. it in better in perspective is what happens there. So, it kind of makes sense why she's kind of mean. Mm-hmm. And especially, you know, as the volumes go on, we'll learn more and stuff. So that'll, that'll be neat. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's just go on to From Shadows. This is from Blake. <laughs> Stop hitting me. I will hit you back. I will punch you. <laughs> I will punch you in the face. <laughs> like, like Ruby did Yang in episode three. Anyway, uh, yeah, let's go. And it's a Flint, Flint of Ruby video, so it's got good fan art. Yup. Look at her yellow eyes. I love her eyes. She looks so sad too. She's like, I'm so done with this crap. This guy over here, he's trying to kill people, and it's just not it's, okay. It's a thing. Okay, I I think I have a gut feeling that he's still a part of white thing. Really? I wonder. I think they grew up together. I have a gut feeling. Just like a closeness. He he's supposed closeness. to be. I think he's five years older than her. Uh, at the time of the trailers in Volume 1. There has to be some romance. Here. He's about 23. She's 17. Okay, maybe not a relationship yet, guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I do love this beat, though. <laughs> Jackie yeah, Mad Man. I like the hint of like a little bit of rock just because she's a little bit dark herself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. just this way. Sorry guys, I'm still on the Blake train. Volume 1 she's... didn't change it. No, and we didn't expect it to, honestly. <laughs> Intruder, identify, identify yourself. I bought a twenty, so it just seems to handle the pit. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use ten to one hundred and five dollars. Okay.
love how her light's flickering out. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm gonna talk about here in a second. Because there is actually something to talk about here. Come on. Alright. So, that was from Shadows. <clears throat> from okay. the Blake short. And there was another version of this that's usually on the soundtrack, but it's just a shortened version, so there was no, really no point in okay. bringing it up. But what I wanted to talk about before we get in... We do a pause. Yeah, before I let you talk, too, um, is that Monty said something about this trailer um, before he passed, obviously. Um, he was talking about how most some people were complaining that it was... It seemed to showcase Adam more than it showcased Blake. And and it almost seemed like he was overpowering her in some way. Okay. And he, he used this uh, description. And he said, he finished all this off, but it's like, you know, they're working together, but it's clearly Adam's more aggressive, more dominant force in this trailer. And he said that the moment Blake chose to cut that train car and leave Adam, that trailer finally came, became about her. Mm-hmm. And it was very, and I just loved the description of that. Because you don't really see it until, like, he points it out. And I understand that. I think that, I think it's good that it kind of surrounds him because you kind of get a feel of him. Mm -hmm. And you feel how she's kind of blocked out and pushed to the side a little bit. Yeah, and it's it's very important for just how their relationship usually works. Um, but yeah, I or just. Or an insinuation of some sort. Yeah. And it works uh, very well to, like, say, hey. This girl, she's working with this guy, sure, but the moment she made the choice to leave, it became all about her. This sounds very familiar. Mm-hmm. Like, in any situation, like, any... And I feel like... Uh, you telling me that, it makes me see him more that he's actually quite abusive, in a sense. Not Maybe not in a physical way, mm -hmm. but maybe in a mental or emotional type of way. A little bit abusive, like, this is how it's gonna be, and mm -hmm. you don't have a say in it. And... And I feel like in that moment, she wasn't just breaking the train free. She was breaking herself free away. And that's a that's an interesting way that he phrased it and that, um, that you can look at that. Because it's just, like, there's really no, outside of the trailer, we haven't gotten too much about Adam. Mm -mm. So it's interesting that Monty would bring that up anyway. So, and, you know, he didn't make it past volume two, unfortunately. And... So it's just from these first two volumes, you're supposed to gather something, and he's just like saying, "Hey, this is what that trailer was supposed." Because there was a lot of complaints I read about how it was more of an Adam showcase than a Blake showcase. Yeah. So, and I understand that criticism. It it's not uncommon, but true. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up because I I always loved how Monty described that. Uh. And while the relationship may or may not have been abusive or anything like that, but it's like... It's just a guess. Yeah. I'm just a guessing. It just and, because... I'm just, and I'm just throwing it out there. And if she's right, I'm not going to tell her, of course. But um, it's just one of those things where I was just like... I do want to get into lyrics a little bit. Because <laughs> like, if you had caught on to those lyrics before uh, chapter 15... <laughs> Because it's like talking about how they're animals mm -hmm. and humans are it subjugating. Me, it would have spoiled know. Yeah, and it's it helps that you can't hardly understand when Jeff sings. Yeah. And that's that's a problem. Does he voice anybody? He doesn't voice anyone. He just sings and does the music. And that's Casey's dad? Casey's dad, yeah. Jeff Williams and Casey Lee Williams. Okay. Um, oh my gosh, that's so weird. Because remember I said she sounded like Haley Williams? Yeah, that, that is a little interesting that you Maybe said that. Maybe they're related. Oh, I doubt it, honestly. Uh, but yeah, that's I just love... I don't like this song a whole lot because it's a lot of heavy metal and you can barely make out mm -hmm. the lyrics. It's not as enchanting as Mirror Mirror or, or Red Like Roses. Red Like Roses, yeah. Um, not to say it's a bad song. It's, not. it's just not to our taste. We the lyrics are fine. The lyrics are great and it shows. It really shows but, off you know, Adam and Blake's to each character. Their own. Like I mean, and yeah. me and her don't like the same stuff either. No, we like. Way different stuff. Yeah, there's too. some things that she likes, like Ariana Grande and grab. I I'm can like, do some rap and some Ariana, and she's not that way. She's more like Broadway esque and country. Yeah, and some pop, a little pop. Like I actually have a very eclectic music taste. It's just usually when it gets to rap or hip hop, I'm like, nah, I'm good. 
It grew on me. My husband actually introduced it to me, so that's why. I'm also not a huge fan of heavy metal, which oh, Jeff, I'm not either. Which Jeff tends to sing. He's a very heavy heavy metal. It might just fit his voice better though. Too. Yeah, but I would like to be able to understand him with the lyrics. <laughs> no. It's not. It's it's not, not a slam like against it. him because no. he's great. I love Jeff and Casey so much. Everybody has their own likes and dislikes. Mm. Um, I burn. I can't believe I forgot <laughs> for a second. I was like, what's it called? Oh god, the brain. Anyway, this is I Burn. This is from the uh, Yang trailer, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, if the I Burning wasn't enough of a giveaway. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, we're not going to do the club remix version that's in her, actually in her trailer. This is the full version without the other trailer songs mixed in. So, hope that's okay with you guys, clearly. If it's not, click Too away. bad. <laughs> Sorry, suckers. Okay. Just kidding. Anyway. You guys. Uh, yeah, let's just go. That's very, that's a very appropriate title. Yeah. She doesn't like metal or rock. This is just nice, steady music here. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is also the explicit version because there's no clean version on YouTube as far as I can tell. Don't watch this if you're under 18. Mm -hmm. Kitty's going. Because it's very like uplifting and like positive, but it's like I'm gonna beat you to a pulp. Mm -hmm. I wish Nora had a song. I don't know. Oh, we're rapping now. Is this Jeff rapping? No. This guy is called uh, Lamar. Uh, Lamar. Kendrick Lamar? No. no. Not Kendrick Lamar. No. Lamar Hall. That's his name. I was gonna say, it's like Jeff. I'm like, oh, he sings heavy metal and he raps. No, that's not Jeff. Lord have mercy, child. I do like the rapping in the song. In the song, though. Move my head. I would <laughs> be been like, so mad like, at you. Sorry for the concussion, darling. We'll have to pause this for a quick quick trip to the hospital. Anyway, yeah, that's I can't decide between this and Mirror Mirror what's my favorite. I really neither of those are my favorite. My favorite is Red Like Roses. Yes, yeah, yeah. just because the beginning is so beautiful. It is such a beautiful song, but I, I actually like a song with more lyrics to it, unfortunately. Okay, let me say this. Okay. Favorite tune is the beginning of Ro Red, Red Like, like Roses. Roses. I can't get it. And then best lyric is Mirror Mirror. Yeah, totally. I totally agree. That's good stuff. Um, That's delicious. The thing with the uh, I burn this particular track, not necessarily the lyrics, because it's mainly just saying, hey, you come at me, I'm going to come back twice as hard on you. 
um, which is very yang, which is very, yang. very like positive and uplifting, and that's what she is. She's yeah. like a bright beacon of light. She's a force. She is just a force of awesome. Uh, but the thing is, uh, mainly about the song itself, the lyrics, uh, you know, the the f bombs and the stuff. Mainly, this was written when Jeff didn't realize what demographic they were going to be heading for for oh, the show. Oh, okay, got you. And he wrote the song, and I can't remember if it was Miles and Carriage or someone in Rooster Teeth that were like. Yeah, that's not quite what we're looking for. We just need to tone tone back the curse words a slight twinge. He's just trying to get a feel. Yeah. Like what audience and, and all that. Jeff was like, oh, okay. So he rewrote some of the, the lyrics to exclude the F-bombs and stuff. But um, it's funny because you cannot find this version on iTunes anymore. Really? It's literally you can only get the clean version. And from what I've heard, I haven't been able to find it. and I haven't, been, I haven't really looked hard, but I haven't been able to find it either. So it's like... It's only on these lyric videos now. And let me rephrase that. Probably if you're 16, you've probably heard a curse word. So 16 and over. 16 and over. Sorry. No, we're going to have eight-year-olds in our audience, okay? Eight-year-olds, turn this off before. Turn they... this off. And we're a little late. <laughs> Think of the children. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, no, Lord. Anyway. We are adults, I promise. We're each over 21 years old. We're 23. We are. We're 30. No, don't lie to the audience, we're Marissa. We're 30. We're just... Age very slow. We're Benjamin Buttons. Benjamin Buttons. Eight years Benjamin old. Benjamin Barker. Oh, anyway. yes. Oh, I love Sweeney Todd. Anyway. Uh, yeah, and now we're going to move on to the theme song. So now Marissa can have the full lyrics. <laughs> yeah, because Kaylee wouldn't help me. <laughs> Out. She's like, I gave you, I gave you the piece from the opening. She that literally plays. sent me the little bitty paragraph <laughs> and I'm like, that's all you get. <laughs> Anyway, let's just let's just go for it. Um, oh, before we start this, I I want to say one thing really quick because I've been watching Volume One a lot, rewatching it, and trying to catch things, and I do agree with you. Yang does not have much of a personality in Volume One, and I don't She's like that. Very much a bystander. Yeah, because I was rewatching, and I I, I was just randomly thinking, I don't want to forget my thought. Yeah. But I was rewatching guys, and I just I I, I felt like something was really missing, and it's because everybody else kind of has a distinct personality distinct personalities and I feel like Yang her personality right now and I know it's not her fault but the writers chose to like you said focus on John and Juniper rather yes. than focus on one of the main characters yes and I see because like in volume one she's mainly known as Ruby's older sister that is her role in volume one and I really didn't really catch it the first time watching but I've watched it about three times yeah, she's rewatched it quite Because I'm times. waiting for volume two, which I hope we'll, I'm sure we'll get to tonight, and I'm really excited for it. <laughs> I can't wait. I'm just, I might be a little more excited than her, actually. But yeah, I, yeah, I have to agree with everything just stated here. I just, I didn't catch it, though, my first time. Yeah, also because we, we watched it in chunks, so it's, like, easy to forget who's been what screen But when you watch it like once consecutive time or two even like I did and all in once. Yeah. And you really catch it then because you're like Yeah. Imagine imagine being when this was airing one episode a week or one chapter a week and you got four weeks of just John stuff. John stuff. Yeah. And I don't really and while Yang's being like okay I'm just a cardboard cut out over say, here. Like I like John to an extent but yeah. I'd rather see more Nora and Ren. Yeah. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. That's I get that from most reactors I've seen. They're like, yeah, Jean's cool, I guess. But, but we're like, we would like to see him. more personality from the other three in yeah. his company. His company. His company. Anyway, yeah. So, but yeah, anyways, I had to throw that in there before I forgot because then I wouldn't remember to say it. But I did Before she it. forgot because she wouldn't remember. No, I do remember things, guys. I just have a million things going on. No, I just thought that was a funny sentence. There's nothing really else to say about that. <laughs> Anyway, let's go to the intro, which is called This Will Be the Day. Okay. Should we check real quick? No, just go ahead. They'll knock. Knock before you enter. To see you a small and helpless. To see you a stressful child. Okay. You were wired. You came for your greatest moments. You came for your finest hour. I'm gonna miss this song. You'll like volume two actually is my favorite opening. Really? So you'll like it. It 
has an end. I know, it's extended. It's wonderful. The full version. It's wonderful. <laughs> you gotta do your punch up with the girly head thing. Oh lord, don't even. Oh god. I will do it. Do it. <laughs> That's a fluffy hair. <laughs> oh, it's so fluffy I'm gonna die. It's so fluffy I'm gonna die. I love this song so much. That's what I'm gonna miss it. Ooh. I, I'm reading these lyrics, it's all about Ruby is what it's talking about, um, a lot of it. It's not specifically Ruby, it's more of just the theme of the volume. It's mainly what the intros are there to convey. Like it's saying we are the lightning, it's very plural. But you are right in assuming that Ruby is the simple soul. Well, because it was saying, they're you know, they're always treating you like a child. Yes. And like your greatest dreams are about to flower. I saw one person state that Volume 1's theme that they, you know, picked up on was mainly just innocence. It's just setting up the world. It's just getting the characters into certain positions. And I and feel like Volume 2 is really going to go down. Stuff's really going to grow. Does it grow a lot from Volume 1? Can you at least say that? Um, I can tell you the animation is a lot better. <laughs> but I can't give you any really... Hopefully less Jean. I like him to an extent, guys, but... She got four episodes of a row of him, and she's like, okay, can we go to the other characters now? Yeah, can we focus Which on somebody else? Which is valid. I'm like, like, I don't hate Jean at all. He's just not my favorite character. He's not who I'm here to watch. And she hasn't influenced me, influenced me in that at all. He just, I just want to see more of the main characters. Mm -hmm. Like, Especially, like, like, Yang and, like, Well, uh, like, I want to know, like, yeah, they were really, I mean, Blake got some part, but it was, like, the very last episodes. Yeah. Where you kind of learn about her. I mean, And Ruby and Wise got, like, the middle of the season all to themselves, basically. And I think, in all reality, that should have been done in, like, two or three episodes. Should have went there, squashed it, moved on. Yeah, and just how it was handled in general was a little But funky, I know but budget was small, and they were trying yeah. to make, they were trying to figure out this whole thing, and so I'm going to cut them some slack, but. Yeah. Like, we know, we understand there's restraints and stuff, but it's like, just learn from it and move on. That's basically the thing. Also, I was blown away with the random fact today that I had no clue of. Ruby still is being made? What? Yeah, she thought... I, told, I thought it was over. Yeah, I told her that we were, you know, we just finished volume she 6. She said the fan art for season 7 came out, and I was like... Yeah. But I, I knew she had said there was only 6 volumes. As of now. But I'm so pumped. Yeah, yes. so we'll probably finish this long before she volume 7 comes out, so we can watch it live together. Yes. So you'll get my we, first reactions to that. <gasps> reactions? Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, don't hurt me. We have problems. It, it is, I have um, problems. It airs uh, November something. Yeah, saying. November is when it's coming back, according to Reader's Is it Keith. like on live or do they just upload it at midnight? They upload it at 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturdays. Cereal? Yeah, so you can just come over. Cereal? Because I usually don't have to work until night shift. So. Cereal? And really? It's like childhood. It's like Saturday morning cartoons. I know. Hi, guys. <laughs> hey, we're back from the transition from the intermission. And we brought pizza. And garlic knots. It's not fair. How can it be this delicious? Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about it in, like, one of our last videos that we're going to do this, so we got to promise. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. 
Mm -hmm. It should not be this good, but it is. This next one might be a little quieter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be smacking on food while listening to the song. Anyway, this one is called I May Fall. And this one was in the episode two credits. It wasn't like in the song, in the show, show is in the credits. But it's still part of the volume soundtrack, so we're going to listen to it. Alright, here we go. While we're chewing and smacking and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Any male vocals you'll hear is Jeff. Other than a rapper. Yeah. I think I remember it. Now that might have been interesting to watch because I'm pretty Shut sure up. we were both. Uh, I both. Be I bet we both looked fabulous. <laughs> I even like. I was making sure like anytime like food was like hanging, I was like hold the pizza right there, so no one will Not see. Me. You guys probably saw this goodness. It's all right. I'm so self conscious. Hello. Okay. Anyway, before we move on, we did not talk about the intro very much. We didn't. No. Because we were trying to. It's because we wanted to eat our pizza and listen to the next song. So. The pizza man was I do want to go back to uh, this will be the day for just a second. Okay. Um, 
you were right that it is like talking about Ruby just a little bit, but it, each intro mainly is just talking about like the theme of the volume itself. And it's Ruby. It kind of centers the whole volume kind of centers around Ruby too. Just a little bit, but it's also just saying, "Hey, you're ready to be introduced to a brand new world." Like it even talks about. Uh, kind of just like an introductory. This is a new world that we created that we're going to let you introduce you to. And there's, while it all seems happy right now, there is a little bit of darkness on the horizon. You know, just, it's stuff like that. I'm curious what this whole darkness is because it's about to go down. Fine. No. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a, it's up there as one of my favorite intros, though, because I, I, I really like it. Um... It's probably my top four, I think, somewhere in there, up there. Because mm-hmm. my uh, my fate, my absolute favorite so far is uh, Volume Two's, uh, as you'll see later. I'm um, sure I miss the old one though. Yeah, like each intro, I'm like, I kind of miss the old intro, except for Volume Three. I didn't really like. It's a good song. Don't get me wrong. It's just not my kind of song. Um, I'm traumatized from from the intro of Volume Three. Oh my lord. That's funny. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's our thoughts on that. I May Fall, while it's overall it kind of seems to have a very pessimistic tone, but it's also like, hey, I'm not going to go down that easy, though. Right. It's very much like, hey, you may send all your grim at me, it may, you know, well, and you'll may, you know, you may kill me in the end, but kinda, I'm not going to fall that easily, and it's not going to be by your hands. Kind of similar to Yang's a little bit. And slightly, but again, it's more of an overall for all the characters kind of tone, though, so. Um, anyway, usually people would listen to Gold here, but I'm going to go ahead and play Red Light Versus Part 2, and then, then we'll listen to Gold, because there's something I want to talk about. Yeah, this okay. is Red Light Versus Part 2. Three, two, one. one. Couldn't take it, couldn't stand another minute. Couldn't bear another day without you in it. All of the joy that I had for all my life was stripped away from you in it. That you died. To have you in my life was all I ever wanted. But now without you, I'm a soul forever holding. Can't help but feel that I ain't taking you for granted. No way in hell that I can ever go. Is this about Ruby's mom? Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Older in there.
Good, <sighs> Good computer. Good stay. Okay, so that was Red Light Roses Part 2, and that is the song that plays during the Nevermore fight in Chapter 8. Okay. So I'm helping you place it. Um, obviously, there is a conversation going on here mm -hmm. between Ruby and her mom, which, fun fact, uh, the other part was played by Casey's mom. Oh. Very talented family they have there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Basically, it was... Me. Basically, basically, it was just talking about how uh, Summer Rose left and never came back. Excuse me, I'm so sorry. I can edit that out. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and it was talking about how she never came back. And it was talking about how uh, Summer has these lines of, please don't do what I did. I don't want you to waste your life in vain. Um, it's basically really just a I feel like if they would have put a sad melody to it, it would have been a really depressing song. Like, really, really sad. If they had not made it hardcore, everyone would be sobbing. Which I think I would like it that way. I actually prefer it more this way. Uh, I think, like, things like, like, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, mm -hmm. and it's just probably worth ten cents, but, um... Only ten cents? I know. Um, but I feel like... Things like that, like, in my opinion, should be, like, addressed in that way just because it is very sad. And I feel like, to me, it's, like, kind of feels like they're kind of, like, brushing over it really lightly a little bit with the tune, I guess. I think what they were going here is more of a kind of a... Lightheartedness. A grief it. and an anger, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a very, like, you know, you've been trapped in a uh, jail of abandonment, they talk about. And it's more of a... and. While this is a Red Like Roses, very much a Ruby and Summer song, it also can be obviously applied to Yang because she's also part of that family. Yeah, and I know you said, didn't you point out that they had two different last names? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, like, during that song, that's what I was thinking about. I'm like, okay, well, Yang's last name isn't Rose, but that means that they have the same mother, which you just said. They have the same mom because you said it could be applied to Yang. Well, I mean... So that Yang would obviously be around when Ruby was born, is what that yes. basically means, because she's two years older. Right, but I'm saying that they have the same mother. I think, anyways. I mean, yeah, it's a valid theory. Uh, Unless Ruby took the mom's last name, and the mom and the dad split up, maybe. I mean, it could be... Uh, so they show, like... Then when they were growing up ever. They show, like, kind of a, uh... I like, mean, that's not really a spoiler. Just no, the, it's I just... Mean, you don't have to tell me it happens, but do they show, like... They don't show, like, any, like, legitimate, like, full cartoon flashbacks. Like, you get flashes, though, uh, basically. Mm. Kind of like um, Blake's. Yeah, basically like Blake's is what I would call it. Okay. Um, but I it, thought it was a very sad song. It's a sad song. I love the and music and stuff. And I thought that the mother but... died. Not that she abandoned them. Or are they calling her well, dying being abandoned? Basically. It's kind of like, you know, you understand that they couldn't help it. But at the same time, all those feelings. They're still great. angry. and Yeah. Angry that it happened in the first place. and uh, Yeah, which anybody would be angry. She uh, talks about how uh, you're not the only one that needed me. Because we can imply that her mom was a huntress of some sort. Or some sort of fighter. Because they instilled those values in Yang and Ruby. Uh, and they both want to become a huntress. Mm hmm And you can imply that, like, you know, she left on a mission, didn't come back, or something like that. But it's it's very much a, you, we're protecting people, we get it, but at the same time, it cost us you. It's kind of like, what about us? Were you not thinking of us when you decided to go and mm -hmm. do that? It's like a typical, like... Angry, ang angriness towards somebody that kind of was just trying to probably do better, do good. And while I, like, I get anger, I also just get pure, like, raw grief. And sometimes raw grief is a guitar solo that just keeps going. Uh, put that, that in, Je Jeff Williams should have that, in, like, in pumped on his, uh, on his, like, resume. A guitar solo that keeps on going, it's just raw grief personified. <laughs> That's why I wish, like, maybe, like, when it was the sad parts, maybe kind of, like, Red Like Roses, how they make a softer approach, but when it gets angry, maybe they should have started, like, the metal. I mm -hmm. thought that would be, like, a... I mean, that's a valid interpretation. I'm not saying you're not... 
have yeah. coins. But I don't know. It's just, I can't picture this. And of course, this is maybe just because I've listened to it so many times this way. But I honestly can't picture this being any other way from Ruby and or Yang's perspective. Right. And that's, I mean, like, they're, I mean, like, everybody has their different perspectives, but that's just my preference. Yeah. Personally. I understand completely. Yeah. It's totally I mean, valid. Yeah. I mean, that's just me, though. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like if I want to listen to a sad song, I want it to. You want listen, it to actually I want feel it sound, sad. Yeah, I want it to sound sad. And, like, I feel like when they're saying it, it just gives a little bit less of a sad emotion and mm-hmm. more of, like, anger taking over. But there's also the fact that while, you know, while this really, it must have hurt Ruby at the time, you know. Yeah. She also does a really good job of, like, being, like, the happy, positive force, along with Yang. Uh, yeah, they both have that alike. Yeah. And <laughs> it's just it's just something that's, uh, like I said, it's preference, honestly. I love the song, don't get me wrong, but I can see where she's coming from. Anyway. I love this picture, by the way. I know it this just picture shows of how Yang protective and Yang is. Mm. Like, can you not just see that? It's like so a... adorable. Hmm. And this song played in the... Credits for episode four. Depending on how young Ruby was when her mom died, mm-hmm. it kind of would make sense why Yang would take more of a motherly role. Mm-hmm. Like, as any big sister, like, yep. I don't want to ever think about it. Like, but, like, think about if something happened. I'm very sympathetic, so I always try to picture it. I hate, I hate picturing it. I do. Because we but, have, we have little siblings. Yes. We're both the oldest sister. Mm-hmm. So, I feel like we, like, identify with Yang more than, like, a youngest sibling would. Yeah. Just because we're protected. But you would do the same thing for Lila. Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. And that's what she had to do. Mm-hmm. I would do it for my sisters if I had to. And, um, so, I, I Thankfully, like, neither one of us have actually had to from a young no, age. But, but um, we understand why. And I think, I think any older sibling would. Even if you're a middle sibling, you know, you have a younger sibling. But we can just relate really well to that. I mm-hmm. feel like it's like a very raw emotion. Like she's tearing up over here already a little what? bit. Looks like you're teary eyed a little bit. Oh, maybe it's just a glare. It's just a glare from my glasses. No, you'll know when I'm crying because I'll be like, she'll cover her eyes. I, 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 I don't see this. me. If I cry, I'll just let tears run down my face because I look better that way. There's a couple <laughs> of videos slash uh, videos that I'm going to show her that I'm going to be like, we need we need tissues right here. Yeah. Anyway. This is gold. Let's let's do it. And I love the picture. The picture is great. It's so cute. I love how when it's like gold or something like that, it's like the the t- the writing is gold yes. too. They most vid- videos have a good job of keeping who's ta- who's speaking. Yeah. yeah. Perspective. I remember editing it. Yeah, that's it. You were doing your little... <laughs> Rose on the sun and say, okay. Mm-hmm. I caught that. I was going to bring it up if you didn't. Oh, I know! I'm trying not to cry. I'm blinking a little bit. <laughs> blinking. I can kind of feel it behind my eyes, but it's like I can feel it in my throat. I'm like, <laughs> this is very young. This feels it's very so positive and like sweet. And this picture. I know it doesn't help. But it's just like the picture is adorable. It's so cute. I'm gonna die. I'm sniffling. Oh god, stop, Marissa. You're gonna love it here in a second. No. <laughs> I'm trying to keep my composure. Oh. No! <laughs> I'm sadistic, I'm sorry. I need some eye drops. My eyes are getting a little red. Oh, 
know what makes me sad, is what I'm thinking right now. What if she's saying this to a little girl? How do you know my heart? <laughs> You're tearing up. A little bit, honestly. No. <laughs> no. Nope. Not doing this. Not doing this bull crap. You're, you wouldn't be the first one on this list. I've seen reaction videos where dudes are like crying to this. This is sad. It's wonderful. A little bit. It's so wonderful. Fun song, but it's not. <laughs> this, all I, I can it. picture, guys, is that like a little ten-year-old gang holding an eight-year-old Ruby singing this song for her because Ruby's upset. Oh God, don't make me think about it. <laughs> Does that not make you think of that? Oh Lord, that's what I picture in my mind. Just because I'm a, I'm a big sister, that's what I picture. Uh huh. Like, and I feel. Well, I'll tell you after this is over. I'll tell you guys what I'm thinking. I have to have my head back, or I'm gonna cry. No more! <laughs> no more, she says. Nothing fell. Okay. Nothing fell. <laughs> I can feel it building in back. I too. Okay, so you caught on to this, like, a rose on a summer's day. Yes, caught it. I legitimately, like, many people have theorized that this is something Yang would say or sing to Ruby right after summer's uh, death disappearance. I know, that's what I was thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and we also kind of picture a little bit younger than... Than that. Ten, yeah. Eight, yeah. Well, my thing on it is, on it, and I know this is strange, but what thinking like, okay, if they're younger than that, that means Yang has had to mother Ruby her whole life, and mm -hmm. it feels so sad because it's like she has to put her life on hold for mm -hmm. her sister because that's what and I'm, I'm sure mothering. I'm and that sure. makes me feel really sad for her because she's just like having to be the strong. Like I feel like she doesn't have really somebody really to lean on herself and that makes me really sad. And I'm sure Yang doesn't regret having to be there for Ruby because she loves her sister. That's never going to be a question. But uh, there's also Oh the my god, I'm going to tear up just talking about <laughs> yes. it. Yes. Because it's so sad. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> There's also the implication that she emulates oh, Summer. Oh, I'm gonna do it! <laughs> oh, I can't do it! I'm gonna cry. Hold the money under my face. <laughs> oh gosh, guys, I did not think I was gonna cry. Talking about it makes me really, really depressed and sad. Not really depressed, but just really sad. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I feel it in my eyes. It's okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> we swear we're not usually this emotional. No, but it's just like a soft spot because it's like so relatable for both of us, I think. Yeah, we love our little siblings so much. Just so help a little. Ah. Well, your glasses are blo blocking it. I felt it, though. It's also... Uh, Sorry, guys. It's also very much oh. a implied that she emulates Summer. Yes. How Summer was with her to take care of Ruby. So it's it's just a really sweet Yang loves her sister kind of song, and I freaking love it, okay? It's beautiful. Um, now... That was heart wrenching. <laughs> I've never heard such a cheerful sounding song make me want to ball. I know, the only reason I don't have this song on my iPod because I, I love it to death, is I don't really care for the music in the background. I know, but watching the lyrics, I could watch it. I could listen to it all day just watching the like, lyrics. I like it, and I'll dance to it, but it's just not iPhone-worthy to yeah. me. But I freaking love the message behind it. So. And, like, just the picture you get in your mind. Mm -hmm. oh, Especially with that fan me. art, because, uh, like, that makes me be very protective over Yang. The fan honestly. art we're talking about, by the way, is uh, on Crimson Night with Roses' video of gold lyrics. So, if you want to look at the fan art, there's that. If you that. are an older sibling, bring tissues. Please. Bring tissues, because, who, oh boy. Um, okay. Now, on a <gasps> happier note, question mark. I will punch you if it's not. <laughs> I better get over here then. I um, have long arms, not really. They're pretty short. <laughs> <laughs> um, the last song on the season volume one soundtrack is Wings. And this is the song that plays Wings? Like Angel Freaking Wings! What are you doing to me? I can't do this. She's in a 
very dark place right now. <laughs> it really hurt me. <laughs> I didn't expect gold to hurt her that bad. That hurt. I felt that. Way in there. Way in there. We have to keep going, Marissa, because we are on a timer. My heart is shook. Sorry, guys. <sighs> okay. Anyway, this is called Wings, and this played in the credits for Volume 1. You didn't hear it because, you know, I skipped ahead to the, the end credit scene. Purposely? Well, no. Was there a spoiler just, in it? No, there's no spoilers, but it's just, I wanted to get to the end credit scene. So this is the last one of volume one. Mm-hmm. Okay, if it kills me, block your face. Pray for me, guys. Oh. Go. Okay. Mush. Kaylee. I no. Have to, I have to stay in frame. You said I was happy. Question mark? <laughs> it's not a long time. You're crying over No, me. I'm trying not to look at you. When you're waiting. It's actually not one of my favorite songs, so. For a small sign. It's purple. So I mean, it's Blake. It's too Blake. It's not from her perspective, but it's but too it's, her. It's, it's hard her to find. From him. I'll tell you in 
Less than 30 seconds. Trying to figure it out. Oh, there we go. This is one I listen to when I'm really sad and I just cry it out. No, that's gold. That's what you listen to when you want to cry it out. Lyrics. That was... Okay. <sighs> okay. Now, I know a lot of people like to say that this is Weiss to Blake. That is a thing that happens and it's a thing that people think. And The only thing I keep thinking of is Weiss was um, about being a straight and then also with the purple there's white underneath. yeah i understand that and a lot of people from volume one were like oh it's wise because they mentioned the 12 hours and searching i'm like well for one okay sure it's a valid interpretation not to say you're wrong precisely but yang was also with her for those 12 hours searching for her and also being like hey we need to find her and she's very more open-minded to finding her and I personally like to think of it as a Team Ruby to Blake song, but it's hmm, either way, it's fine. There's also some future evidence that I can't get into that kind of implies that Wings is a Yang to Blake song, but it's it's here or there. If you want to say it's wise, sure, go ahead. I don't I don't really care either way. Um, I like the Team Ruby idea. Yeah, I, I personally am a fan of the Team Ruby to Blake because why is particularly in this. At that section epic, yeah. of the story is not very open to Blake. Uh, even when they make up. In even sense, when they make up, it's, it's a little not... ungenuine? Ingenuine. In disingenuine. Disingenuous. Yeah, something like that. We got it. We somewhere. speak words. <laughs> <laughs> and drink milk. Um, I drink milk. Uh, I did not expect what? Why are you looking at me? Oh, it's just... Uh, just you thought I was peeking at your thing? No. Your, your screen, that's so... It's it's the Volume 7 poster, so it's like, please don't look at my phone. Please don't look at my that's, phone. That's kind of a thing where I'm like, you don't get to look at my phone Does Casey anymore. do all the vocals even through all the volumes? All the volumes has been Casey with her dad popping up here and there. I think her mom has never shown up in another song. She's an adult now, right? So uh, She's younger than us, because she was 14 in 2013. So... She should be about 21 now? Yeah, so she's an adult. Yeah, she's technically an adult. Like, we're technically adults. <laughs> we're adults, but we just don't feel like it all the time. Yeah. Only when we have to go do insurance policies. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. taxes. We're not going to talk and, about any of that. And go to... I can't say it. W work. Word. The word? The don't word work. It. Work. Oh. oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so yeah, whatever you want to interpret the song as... To Blake, it is obviously to Blake. There's no denying that. Um, but yeah, so it's a really it's a cute song. It's fine. I it's just too slow for my taste. I like mine like Red Like Roses. There's a little more kick to my songs, usually, or like Mirror Mirror, where there's like a really fancy piano doing gymnastics in the background. It's all. I just need something a little more kick to it. Um. But yeah, this wraps up the Volume 1 soundtrack. Uh, so and tears fell. Tears on the song I was not expecting them to fall on, honestly. And I even got some, almost got some out of her, too. I know, because she's talking about how sad and wonderful and precious. And I'm like, don't make me think about all the sad things. Oh, Lord. It was like a buildup from talking about, like, the mother and all mm. that. And then it's just like... <gasps> That's kind of why I wanted to put, like, because normally on the soundtrack, it's gold, then red like roses. But I wanted to put Red Like Roses first so I could freely talk about more about the mom that way. Um, and it builds up tears. That's an it evil, builds evil up emotions way. in your in your heart. If it doesn't build up emotions in your heart, you're you're heartless. I'm sorry. You're oralless. That's sad. Mm -hmm. You're soulless. You're a grim. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your loss. You're an Ursa. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a Beowulf. Um, you're a King Taijitu. So I think in the next video we're gonna go ahead and jump volume in. Two. Volume two. We were gonna two. do volume. Uh, we're gonna do. We were gonna do World of Remnants, but there's a couple things where I'm like, that's slightly spoilerish. So I'm just gonna leave it to like maybe mid volume or something like that. 
Um, or maybe to the end of the volume. Girl. I don't know. We'll see. Brown girl. And we'll do volume two soundtrack after vo we after volume it. two. And we'll do that with all the uh, volumes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. After each volume, we'll do a that soundtrack. That was a very Ruby. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Nope. <laughs> Yay! 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 I told you how they all get yeah, into character. I know. I still love Weiss's. I'm a victim. <laughs> So wise. If I had to say that every day, that'd be something else. Like, brothers of the white fang, why are you aiding the scum? <laughs> it's just kind of, I don't know, it's just fun. Anyway, we will catch you guys for your next video. Remember, no spoilers in the comments, because I know how you demons are. We will talk about that next video. Yeah, because we are Stay running tuned. out of time here. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>